turn, getting players comfortable with that. Once we're through a punch, we want to get into a jam. Okay, so a jam turn now is a full turn when you come out. So it's not that 90 degree turn like a punch. A jam is going to be your full turn. So within this, again, we're going to reset. You'd go through similar progressions that we did uh, with partners to start with. Now what's going to happen is you're going to work through this here, engaging the foot, now releasing. So you don't have the support, but now you want to be able to accelerate out. So here, getting comfortable on the flats, now engaging. And from here, we're going to have a push through the heel, that back foot, to be able to drive our knee out, accelerate back in the other direction. So the concept of this drill when we're doing it, we want them to get comfortable feeling that support at the start. And we want to have them release into a glide position. Glide, 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 engage the foot, accelerate out. Okay, so you lose that support. You have the support at the start, but then you lose that feeling of support that you have. So after this, now we add in a puck. So this is where your puck spots come in or puck touches, being able to spot pucks in your stance. So from here, you're going to see a puck spot, accelerate out, puck spot in the other direction. So puck spotting into areas is a, is a big skill that's come up over the last couple of years, especially with uh, the rise of PEP. I don't know how many of you guys have worked with Power Edge Pro, but a lot of it is spotting pucks into areas. Same concept here out of your turn is your ability to spot a puck into an area so you can accelerate into that turn and accelerate out. So this is for us what allows players to really create separation is spotting pucks so they don't have it on their stick the whole time spotting it into an area where it leads them and then they can come out of that turn. Okay, so here again, it's just the, uh, a clip of being able to use it again in a tactical situation. So from here, we've got a wide base. We're protecting the puck right from here. Okay, you get that defender to commit. We've spotted the puck into a good area. We can use that lead foot and our back foot allows us to maintain our speed as we come out. Okay, so we'll watch it again from here. Slow motion, if you watch the weight transfer and where that location is, the spray on that skate, it's not in the heel, it's not in the toe, it's right in the middle. So it's finding that area on that blade again that we can engage and control our friction. So we're not coming right on the edge, we're more on that flats area, which allows us to engage and control the friction we're creating on the ice. So from there, the other concepts that we go through, I'm going to show you just a couple clips of it in action. So this first one's McDavid. So I apologize, there's sound to this one, but we're not going to listen to uh, the fridge break this one down for us here. So the big thing we talk about within this is that a lot of players, when they do this, and I'm going to show you guys uh, some clips of some different levels of players doing this and how they're able to maintain their speed as they get older and more accustomed to it. But within this, the big thing here, okay, obviously offensively is going to get the defender to turn his toes and commit, okay, which allows us then to have that cutback. But it's his ability here to maintain his speed. Give me a sec here to get back to that spot. So from here, you guys are going to see it. Okay, they talk a lot about the distance and that he creates here. But for us, it's about that ability to create that speed back. So he's not coming to a full stop here. You're going to see him come in. He engages that front foot. So the front foot is engaged, getting again on that flat into the middle of the skate. The back foot allows him to maintain speed and accelerate out. Okay. The last part of this is just that puck movement. So we talked about the puck moving first. You're going to see that within this clip as well. He's going to spot the puck into an area, protected position, and then he can accelerate out. Okay, so this would be our uh, our full jam turn and our ability to come out with that puck first turn. So this one here, okay, different level. So this is Peyton Krebs from the ice. I want you to watch from here his ability to engage here. So he does a good job driving to the middle. If you watch him, he loses a little bit more speed. So to me, this is just the difference between each level. As at this level, he can come to a stop and Peyton's an elite player. He can come to a stop and still have the ability to create that separation. But at the next level, it's going to be a little, a lot tougher for him to create that separation if he comes to a full stop. So for here, we want to work at not stopping completely with the feet, engaging that front foot, okay, getting on the flat and using that back foot to maintain our speed as we come out. So just an example of it at a different level. 
Okay, so this next one here that I'm going to show you, this is Crosby. So similar situation. This one's not off the rush. I'm sure you guys have seen this clip. From here, he's down low. You can see the separation he creates with the speed that he comes out with. So he's not coming to a full stop. He's using the one foot to stop. Then obviously he lights him up. But from here, I want you guys to see this again. So we'll slow it down here so you can see it. You're going to see some edge work at the start. As he comes towards the corner, you're going to see him engage the front foot and then be able to accelerate out to create the separation. The next angle of it here is a lot better, so we'll watch that. So from here, you guys will see it here. Again, the back foot is right foot, stays forward. That allows him to maintain his speed. Inside foot, he's got it lifted. He's unweighted it. Watch how it comes down right in the middle of the blade. This foot is not stopping. This foot is keeping his speed up. You can see the separation that he creates. Obviously, Strom does a real poor job here defensively, but you can see that separation that he creates. And now he's able to re-attack with speed offensively. So just able to see it at different levels. The big thing within it, obviously, is that players are able to keep their speed up and not have to slow down. The last concept that I want to go over within a jam turn is spotting pucks. So typically, you're going to see this on the forehand side. A lot of players, as they come in on the forehand side, they're going to want to cross the hands. We talked about this before with spotting. When you spot pucks on your forehand side using this, you can also use the boards to support you to spot that puck. So we're going to watch this a couple of times from here. You guys will see the puck spot. So from here, spotting the puck into an area allows you to be able to come out of that turn with speed. Give me a sec here. So spotting it into a good area. Now you can see the separation it creates. God damn it. Give me a sec here. Separation that it creates. <laughs> and using those boards to keep up the speed on the puck. So we can spot it into here. It allows us to keep our hands in a good position. It allows us to create that separation to the net. Okay. So we're going to watch this a couple times. Two different situations. The first one here is going to be Kyle Connor. In this situation, he ends up exposing the puck, but I want you to see how he uses the boards to create this movement and create space for himself on Petrangelo. So puck's going to come down low to him. Okay, good recovery here off that puck. Now as he's doing it, he's going to spot it once here. Okay, and he ends up losing the puck. So we'll go back. We're going to watch it again from here. So from here, I want you to see him get it. Spots it back. Spots it forward just a little bit too far so he can't protect it. But what that allows him to do is it allows him to use that jam or that punch turn okay, to be able to accelerate and be able to maintain his speed as he's coming out. So we'll watch it one more time. Quick spot. Quick spot the other way. Just exposes it at the end. Okay, So that's one example where he exposes a puck. This next one is a successful play. So we're going to watch uh, Tanev. He's going to come into the play to recover the puck. So he's on his forehand side, he's getting forced. He runs out of space. So oftentimes you're gonna see players try to turn their hands over. He runs out of space here, watch him spot it into an area where he can come out and make a play. We'll watch it from a different angle here so you guys can see how he uses the boards. Okay, so right into here, you're gonna see him work up the boards. He's running out of space. He's gonna spot the puck into an area where he can use that, that jam turn to be able to accelerate out. As the puck now, he's able to make a play. The other thing you can see off it is the separation he creates by spotting the puck. So it allows him to skate into the puck. So from here, spots it. He's got Muzzin's toes committed up ice. Now he has the ability to accelerate back into that spot and be able to make that play. So again, just another option that you guys can have, that you guys can implement uh, for players is their ability to be able to spot pucks as well. So especially on the forehand side, uh, get them confident using the boards, get them confident using spots into areas. Allows them to keep their speed up. Biggest thing is their puck, uh, puck placement, that they don't expose the puck. Okay, so another concept within the flats is toe turns. So with toe turns, we talk about these used off recoveries, uh, whether it be an offensive recovery or a defensive recovery. The concept of these is to be able to close the gap between your pressure, be able to get them to commit their toes as well, and then be able to accelerate out. So oftentimes when we